So, plate tectonics, in its simplest form, it's massive rocky chunks of earth that are either colliding, dividing, or sliding. Specifically though, it's when sections of the two top layers of the earth, called the lithosphere, move around by floating on a more gooey and liquid layer called the asthenosphere. The broken up floating lithosphere sections riding piggyback on the asthenosphere are called plates. And this motion of the lithospheric plates is, you guessed it, plate tectonics. Now more about the lithosphere. The lithosphere is a combination of the Earth's crust and the upper mantle, which is another layer just underneath it. It's important to remember, though, that the Earth's crust is not just the part that we walk, drive, and basically live on, but it also includes the ocean floor. The thickness of the lithosphere gives you a good perspective on how massive it is. Continental lithosphere, or plate, is thickest, ranging from 150 to 200 kilometers, while oceanic plate is less thick, about 80 to 100 kilometers. The asthenosphere, located under the lithosphere, is a flowing layer of partially molten or liquid rock. We don't generally think of rocks as fluid or runny, but tremendous pressure and heat cause the rocks in this layer to flow like liquid. The asthenosphere is in a constant state of motion because of convection currents, which are powered by heat deep within the Earth. And since the lithosphere sits on the asthenosphere, it's constantly moving as well. The actual movement of the plates is much too slow to notice, moving at about three to five inches per year, which makes sense considering how thick the plates are. Three to five inches per year is about the rate at which your nails grow, which you also probably never noticed or paid much attention to. All major and really noticeable movement of the Earth's plates happens over millions and millions of years. If you've ever made hot cocoa, then you saw a good simulation of plate tectonics, but probably weren't aware of it. When the cocoa powder was added to the vigorously boiling milk, but not yet stirred in, it floated around with the convection current in the heated milk. In a similar fashion, the Earth's plates lying on top of the flowing asthenosphere move as the asthenosphere moves because of convection currents. Let's take a look at some of the identified plates. There are eight major plates and several minor ones. The major plates are the Pacific Plate, North American Plate, Eurasian Plate, African Plate, Antarctic Plate, Australian Plate, Indian Plate, and the South American Plate. Scientists believe, and for good reasons, that at one time all the plates were connected into one large landmass, and that plate tectonics is the reason they broke up into the plates that we know today. And, and here's how they came up with this theory. One, the plates like pieces in a puzzle can be connected into one single continent. And if you ever noticed how Africa and South America just seem to fit, you can see how they came up with this idea. And two, the boundaries of the plates have similar rock formations and fossil findings. And speaking of the plate's boundaries, this is where a lot of the action happens. When two plates collide and push together, the place where they make contact is called a convergent boundary. Mountains, volcanoes, islands, and earthquakes form at convergent boundaries. Here's an interesting tidbit. When India and Asia converged about 55 million years ago, the Himalaya, the highest mountain system in the world, was formed. The opposite of a convergent boundary is a divergent boundary, where two plates pull apart and split. It happens when magma from deep within the Earth pushes up on the bottom of the lithosphere, lifts it, and flows sideways underneath it. 
The sideways flow of the magma causes the plates above to be dragged in the direction of the flow. Pretty soon, the plate breaks and pulls apart. Now, when this happens in the ocean, the end result can be uh, underwater mountain ranges called mid-oceanic ridges. There could be a new seafloor, possibly a volcano, a shallow earthquake, and sometimes ocean basins are formed. Ocean basins are like large bowls that hold water. Now, divergent plates on land, they produce lowland areas of valleys known as rift valleys. Minor earthquake activity and occasional volcanic eruptions also happen here. The Great Rift Valley in Africa, a 6,000-mile crack in the Earth's crust, is a famous example of a rift. Scientists say that if the plates there continue to move apart, then millions of years from now, eastern Africa will split from the continent to form a whole new landmass. In between the old and new landmasses will be a mid-oceanic ridge. And again, that's an underwater mountain system. That's pretty remarkable. The last type of boundary is called a transform boundary, also commonly referred to as a fault. At this boundary, the two plates simply slide past each other. Earthquakes often happen here. One really famous transform boundary in the United States is the San Andreas Fault located in California. It's the reason why there are so many earthquakes in that state. So there you have it, plate tectonics, millions of years of lithosphere sections colliding, dividing, sliding, all while free riding on a stenosphere.